everyone for joining us this evening. Um, Dr. Akshet Paliwal, um, Medical Director of Imaging Services for NCH is going to be presenting a breast cancer screening presentation as part of our North Country Health Community um, presentation series. Um, thank you very much for your patience. Um, I'll be letting people in um, as we progress and this video is being recorded. Um, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, everyone uh, will be muted during the presentation. You're welcome to ask questions in chat. Um, once Dr. Polywell has finished, we will um, have a brief um, question and answer session um, and everyone can ask questions at that time if you're all agreeable to that. Um, again, thank you very much for joining us and um, take it away. Thanks for introducing me, Nancy. So I just want to uh, say that uh, my name's Akshat Paliwal. Uh, I'm the clinical director for radiology and imaging services for all of the three North Country hospitals. So that is AVH, uh, that's a Weeks Medical Center and Upper Connecticut Valley Hospital. Uh, I just wanted to share this slide, uh, which shows some other members of our team. So we have a, we are trying to have a breast care team. Uh, and we have surgeons at uh, at least, well, actually at all three hospitals uh, at this point. Uh, Dr. Maude Etking is at Weeks Medical Center. Dr. Matthew Jones, he's at Weeks Medical Center. Dr. Tasman Durant is at Androscoggin Valley Hospital and Upper Connecticut Valley Hospital. And all three of these general surgeons do breast surgery and are interested in doing more breast surgery. Uh, I myself go to all three hospitals. Um, and then we have a team of sonographers and mammographers at each uh, dedicated to each hospital also. Uh, in terms of the services we provide, uh, we do breast screening. So that's uh, 3D breast mammography at all three of the sites. Uh, this, whenever somebody comes in for breast screening or routine breast screening, that's what uh, most people end up getting is uh, 3D mammography. What a 3D mammography is, is basically taking the x-ray of your breasts. We usually do it in two different views. Uh, so the breasts are compressed from up to down and side to side. So these are the two views. And we take slices of it. To, that's a 3D part of it. Uh, women usually get this every once a year or once every year at our practice. Um, all of these screening mammograms are run through AI software to pick up any abnormalities. Uh, and uh, we go through our process of looking at it, all of these screening mammograms. In addition to doing screening mammography, we offer all sorts of other comprehensive breast services. If any, uh, men or women have any palpable masses in their breast area, you can call your primary care doctor and they can refer you to us, or you can actually call us directly and uh, we can set you an appointment uh, to do a clinical evaluation of any breast problems you may have. Some women come to us for breast mass or a lump that they feel. Some people have a discharge. Some people come in for breast pain. Uh, so these are the all the things we see in radiology uh, in our uh, breast program. So that's kind of our screening part of it. Sometimes, you know, when you get a screening, there may be some abnormality. Uh, we call you back. We do breast ultrasound. We do additional mammographic views. We offer breast MRI. So we pretty much have everything in terms of breast care available like diagnostic services uh, of every kind up in uh, NCH. Breast MRI is currently only available at uh, AVH. Um, it's soon coming to Weeks Medical Center um, and UCVH patients have the choice of going to either Weeks Medical Center or AVH to get breast MRI in case they need it. So I just wanted to talk about um, screening mammograms. There's sometimes some controversy associated with screening mammograms as to who should be getting them, how often people should be getting them. 
you know, what does it mean to have a, a abnormal screening mammogram? So all these kind of things. So I'm just going to go through a very short presentation, maybe answer some of your questions, present some studies that have come out recently uh, that show how effective or not, not effective a screening mammogram is for various reasons. So a lot of the uh, materials of this presentation were uh, collected together uh, by uh, people in the uh, American College of Radiology. That's our uh, academic medical board for radiology. So again, we're going to talk about breast cancer screening today and screening mammograms. And uh, if anybody has a question, you can kind of type it in the chat uh, and we'll address it either in the middle of the presentation or towards the end by putting it in a chat during the presentation. And at the end, we'll just open up so people can also ask any questions. So today, I just wanted to talk about who is at risk for breast cancer. Uh, this question of does mammography save lives uh, and some maybe uh, quantitative ways of looking at it, uh, some studies that have been done on this topic. Uh, when should women start getting breast cancer screening and how often should we be doing breast cancer screening and some of the risks uh, versus the benefits of mammography. So these are stats from uh, two or three years ago. Uh, there was, a, in terms of getting more recent things, things were kind of thrown off by the uh, pandemic. A lot of the screening programs were not uh, there. Some of the data collection is not there, but it is uh, still one of the most common diagnosed cancers in women. 13% uh, of women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime. There are, uh, about in, in 2019, at least, there were 330,000 new cases that were anticipated, uh, and 30% of all new cancer cases in women were breast cancer cases. Uh, about 42,000 uh, 42, women are expected to die from breast cancer. That, that was in 2019, and um, there are about 3.5 million women living with breast cancer. So this is from uh, data from 2016. So the big question is, has mammography reduced breast cancer risk? So this is kind of the question that people ask, like, is this worth it for me to get a mammogram? Does it reduce my actual uh, risk of breast cancer death? Uh, meaning, you know, we diagnose women with breast cancer. Sometimes we diagnose it under screening and sometimes, you know, we diagnose it for uh, other reasons. Women may feel a lump or you may come to your, uh, primary care doctor with uh, abnormality and it's not during screening. So there are two ways of diagnosing breast cancer, two different times. So breast cancer screening with mammography kind of took, started happening uh, in the, almost at 1990. And you can see this is kind of where we started doing mammography. And this is the adjusted breast cancer mortality rates for 100,000 women. So things were pretty stable at about you know, 70 deaths per 100,000 or close to it. Things were not changing very much. Then mammography was introduced around this time and there was approximately 42% reduction in mortality from when mammography kind of became a mainstay. And you can see a decreasing trend since. You know, you can estimate that about, about 400,000 lives to 500,000 lives were saved because of mammography or can be partially attributed to mammography and screening. So evidence of benefit, I just wanna share some studies that show the benefit of mammography. So there have been a couple of, you know, the, the gold standard, you know, how you'd establish if something is, helping or some, there is some clinical effect of uh, an intervention or treatment or a screening method is you do something called a randomized controlled trial. A randomized controlled trial is when um, people are randomized to either somebody gets a mammogram or not get a mammogram and you kind of control it 
beforehand, uh, meaning it's not that you're just seeing who's uh, people getting mammography. Are they are they being uh, are they getting diagnosed earlier with breast cancer and having lower mortality? Uh, but you kind of randomize it. It's hard to do with something like mammography because it's hard to tell people that we're going to put you in a random group where you either get a mammogram or not get a mammogram. But there have been those studies, uh, and there in those studies there has been a 20% reduction in breast cancer deaths. So this is for women's women aged between 40 and 74 in a randomized control trial, which is kind of the gold standards of clinical trials. There has been a 20% reduction in breast cancer death. And then there's observational studies. Observational studies are basically, you're not assigning people to groups uh, prospectively, but you're just looking at how the women who got screening versus women who never got screening. And in those cases, you know, it's not as good of a evidence because it's not, you, you're not designing the trial yourself. You're just looking at the data. Uh, there has been compelling evidence that there has been about 40% reduction in uh, breast cancer deaths. So, and you know, these observational studies show benefit for women over 74 also. So even if you're older, uh, over the age of 74, there's also still benefit to getting mammograms. So here's just a little bit, I mean, I, we can go into it. Uh, there has been, this basically shows a couple of different uh, uh, randomized control studies which have shown benefit. Uh, so there are a couple of different uh, studies that were done in a few different countries and all of them have shown a benefit where there has been a reduction in overall breast cancer deaths. So then there's evidence of benefit observational data. Uh, so why observational data matters. So sometimes people say that the randomized control studies, they're difficult to kind of do. Uh, it's kind of difficult to assign women to these uh, different groups. So these observational data or the observational studies are usually much, much larger. Uh, and the data sets for these are much larger. So you can see a whole population. Say you can design a study where you saw all the women in North country, and you could see who got uh, breast cancer screening over the last 30 years and who did not get screening and look at overall breast cancer deaths. And you can kind of make a determination from that. So people have done this on a countrywide basis. Some countries have like a much better record of the uh, entire population. And these studies have showed a reduction in death uh, approximately 40%. So there is some, you know, some additional data from different countries, and there it is. It kind of like diff, from country to country, the, the reduction that, that you see is pretty similar. It's close to like forty-two percent, thirty-eight percent. So it's kind of in the same ballpark. There was a study done in Canada. This was a very large study of two point eight million women, conducted between nineteen ninety and two thousand nine. Uh, it did the same comparison, and the results again showed a 40% reduction in mortality. Then there is a kind of interesting to kind of split the data up by age group. So some women think that, you know, hey, I'm on the younger side of things, and maybe, uh, you know, I want to know how much benefit is the mammography to me at a younger age. So here we can see there. If you just split up the data by, you know, the decades of life, so younger women, 40 years to 49 years of age, there was a 44% reduction in mortality. And women who are older, meaning from 70 years to 79 years of age, so these are uh, some, some screening criteria do not include these women, but, you know, the data shows that it reduces mortality in them pretty much about the same. I mean, there's not much difference between 40% and 35%. So pretty wide range of uh, women see the same exact benefits from screening mammograms. So there are a few additional considerations, things to think about. Uh, the benefits, 
uh, besides the you know forty percent drop in breast cancer death, uh, when these cancers are detected early with screening mammograms, the surgery that is done is often less extensive, meaning women end up getting uh, smaller surgeries. A typical surgery for a large breast cancer could be a mastectomy. Uh, women who have smaller breast cancers or cancers that are detected during screening often get a surgery called lumpectomy, which is a small portion of the breast is taken out just surrounding that cancer uh, area. And there is also a reduction in chemotherapy. And it has been shown that chemotherapy is actually more effective for women who have been in a screening program. So this was a study that was done uh, for women. Uh, they, they did a follow-up of women. Uh, and it showed you know, screen women had a 60% lower mortality 10 years after follow-up and 47 lower, uh, percent lower mortality 20 years after follow-up than unscreened women. So now there, I'm gonna talk about this uh, a little later that there are different, now there are conflicting kind of data out there as to when you should start screening and how often you should screen. So there's an argument that women should start screening at 40 years of age and get annual screening. So I just wanna talk about why you should start screening at 40. So one in six breast cancers are found in women who are between the age of 40 and 49. So that's a pretty significant number there. And a 10 year risk of being diagnosed with breast cancer in a 40 year old woman uh, is pretty much one in 69. So that's, that's, uh, that's still, if you look at 100 women that you're gonna be doing catching a significant number of breast cancers in that age group. And about one third of the years of life lost from breast cancer are women in their forties. So, I mean, you can think about it. If you get diagnosed with breast cancer early, uh, you have a higher chance of both mortality and morbidity. Uh, and it affects you more if you get diagnosed with uh, breast cancer early. And if you can prevent it or catch it earlier stage, it has more greater benefit. And uh, greater than 70% of women uh, dying from breast cancer in their 40s belong to the, often to the group that are not being screened. So, so here I want to talk about just some of the other benefits uh, of screening that starts at age of 40. So starting yearly mammograms at the age of 40 cuts the breast cancer deaths by about 40%. Yearly screening at 40 versus other age groups, uh, which other recommended age groups, some women do not start screening later till 70 to 74. You can save, if you look at the data in the two different scenarios, you can possibly save 14,000 more lives in the United States every year. So that's a very large number. And uh, over 40% of the years of life, meaning this is kind of a complicated concept, but as I said, if you get diagnosed earlier, you're affected more greatly than if you were diagnosed at the age of 75 or 80. So uh, it basically higher quality of life, uh, years that are lost and the number of years lost is also greater if you, if you're not, uh, if you get diagnosed late between the years of 40 and 49. So here I want to talk about some alternative screening guidelines that, and how they compare to the American College of Radiology guidelines. So there is this uh, thing called USPSTF. So this is basically a screening task force that is created by the government. Um, and then the other one is uh, ACS, which is a surgical um, uh, basically American College of Surgeons. Uh, so they also put out their own guidelines. Uh, so there are some limitations. They have a, a smaller group of women that they recommend screening to, which means a smaller, uh, the age range 
for both of these different uh, groups that, that they recommend is they recommend starting screening later and stopping screening at an earlier age. And sometimes they say uh, to skip a year. So here's basically the data on this. So uh, the three different recommendations currently that are out there. So there here is the screening recommendation for American College of Radiology, which recommends yearly screening between the age of 40 and 84. Um, and you know, oftentimes if patient is in a is ha, is enjoying a great quality of life, otherwise, meaning they don't have other comorbidities and things like that, meaning a healthy person who's over the age of 84, which happens more and more these days, uh, you can continue screening later in life. Um, so there's this is basically says what the reduction risk of dying of breast cancer is. So there's another USP, uh, USPTF, uh, which gives a recommendation of screening between um, age of 59, uh, 55 and 79, uh, and year, uh, every other year between 55 and 79, and yearly between 45 and 54. And then the third recommendation is every other year between 50 and 74. So you can see, you know, if you get screening uh, between the age, uh, between 40 and 84 and get it yearly. And if you look at a large number uh, of women, uh, there's a 40% reduction in uh, all mortality due to breast cancer. And if you go to every other year model and you kind of put it between 50 and 74 years, the re risk reduction goes to uh, 23%. So basically you're catching less cancer and you're also having women die uh, of breast cancer more. So, here again, this is the concept of uh, years of life lost due to death from breast cancer by age of diagnosis. And you see the greatest, uh, the women who are affected by the most number of years lost due to death from breast cancer are the younger women who. Uh, would have benefited the most sometimes from the screening. So I just wanna talk about, okay, so why exactly do people write, have different recommendations? If you're saving more lives, you know, what people cite are the risks. So the risks are a risk of calling patients back, uh, doing additional testing that may otherwise not happen or maybe doing a biopsy that comes back as benign. So biopsies have risks associated with them, oftentimes risk for infection and risk for bleeding and other complications. So people cite these risks as reasons why screening should not be as widespread as it is these days, or as, it, as it's recommended by ACR. So I just wanna talk about what exactly happens when somebody gets a screening. Um, so women get screening, uh, about 90% of the women who get screening, so meaning 90 out of 100 women, will be told that their mammograms are normal. So you'll get a letter in the mail saying that your mammogram was normal and there's nothing to uh, do. You can come to your next screening, which is the, you know, the subsequent year. Uh, and about 10 out of every 100 women will be asked uh, for additional imaging. So this is a little bit older data. Now, since we have been doing 3D mammograms, we've gotten slightly better at this and it's the number has dropped from maybe 10 to five. So maybe 95% of the women will get a normal letter and 5% will get a letter saying there's additional imaging required. So when these women are called back for this additional imaging, it's usually a more focused mammogram, meaning that uh, part of the breast is compressed and where the abnormality is and you get these more uh, detailed mammogram. And often with that, we'll do a ultrasound to look at the same uh, problematic area. Uh, so when that happens, so say in this case, maybe we, if we call back five, uh, five women, uh, three of those women who are called back, so meaning three out of the 100 women, uh, we'll again be told that, okay, after we looked at your additional imaging, there's nothing that we're concerned about. There's nothing for breast cancer uh, that is concerning for breast cancer. So then that leaves 
uh, basically two people. So one out of 100 will be asked to return for six month follow, meaning that we saw something it is not very concerning for breast cancer, but because we are very cautious, we want to have you come back in six months and make sure that it doesn't change. So it's not completely normal, but it's not something very uh, suspicious for breast cancer. And then maybe one or two women at 100 would be recommended to have a needle biopsy. So that's a one, a one or 2% biopsy rate for everybody who's screening. So it's very rare that if you get a screening that you're gonna end up with a biopsy. So again, then there are risks associated with biopsy. Uh, you know, Some of the things that people have to think about, people get very anxious when they get called back for additional imaging or get told that there's gonna be biopsies. There are some psychological effects associated with this. Um, and then there's, there is this thing called false positives. So meaning uh, both false positive in terms of your screening, meaning you get called back, but it, you know, everything is, it turns out normal, but for like the two weeks you're thinking about it, you were stressed out about it. And then there is, uh, you know, you recommended biopsy and then it takes another week to get results for the biopsy and you're worried about what's going on. Um, so those are all psychological effects from being called back, doing biopsies uh, and, uh, and things of that sort. But all of this must be kept in context. Like if this process, you know, if 1% of the women who get screening end up getting a biopsy, but overall there's a 40% reduction in breast cancer deaths due to screening mammograms, that's something that should be take, you know, thought of hand in hand, you know. Um, so yeah, th th there are some costs, meaning there's costs for anxiety, there's costs for you know, people being stressed because they had an abnormal screening mammogram or if they recommended a biopsy. But you know, th the other part of this is there's a 40% reduction in breast cancer deaths, which multiple studies have shown. Then there's the other risk, it's called the risk for overdiagnosis. Some people say if you're overdiagnosing breast cancer, uh, so I just want to talk about that. So uh, overdiagnosed breast cancer is a breast cancer that would not kill a woman in her lifetime. Breast cancers can be slow growing cancers. That's something I want to let you know. So, you know, you can have these grow over years. And it, you know, sometimes this is really, it is a really hard thing to say that, you know, there's a breast cancer. If you had a breast cancer, it would not have killed you over a lifetime. So it's, it's possible, um, but it's estimated that, you know, one to 10% of breast cancer fall in this category, meaning there are these very small uh, percentage of breast cancers, which are so slow growing that would not have affected your life, uh, especially if you're older, say if you're 75 or 85 and you got diagnosed with breast cancer, there could be a breast cancer, which is so slow growing um, that, you know, we would have recommended uh, biopsy and you could have gotten a surgery for breast cancer, but there's a small chance that that breast cancer would have, you know, not have led to a person's death. Um, so yes, there is that risk of overdiagnosis, but that's really rare. And it only pertains to a very small percentage of breast cancers. Several of the breast cancers we see are uh, in the category called invasive ductal carcinomas, which are very aggressive. So you don't want to underdiagnose. Uh, Overdiagnosis has not been as much of a concern as it's made, made out to be. So kind of, if you want to summarize again, the risk for breast cancer. So, you know, as I showed you with the data that screening mammography has been a proven lifesaver, there is a 40% reduction in breast cancer death with regular screening. And most lives are saved when annual screening begins at the age of 40 and women get regular screenings every year. And, you know, now these days we have a lot of different types of therapies for breast cancer. There is breast surgery, there's immunotherapy, there's chemotherapy, and all these treatments are most effective when cancers are caught early during screening mammograms. 
Um, and risk such as, you know, recall for additional imaging, needle biopsies, anxiety and overdiagnosis are there, but you have to keep it in context and think about that overall reduction in mortality. So the number of lives saved are still very significant. I just wanna briefly talk about breast cancer screening for women with higher than average risk. So there are women who have greater than average risk for breast cancer. So there's some uh, race component to it, which does not apply as much to our population in North Country. We have a predominantly white population, uh, but the, there's a higher risk for breast cancer in women of Ashkenazi Jewish origin and uh, in, in Black women. So they may benefit from supplemental screening. So there are, I, I do not want to go into how do you determine if you're at a higher risk? A couple of things that you know you can think about that you could could put you in a higher risk, or if you have uh, a, a first degree relative who has been uh, diagnosed with breast cancer. Uh, so it'd be a mother or a daughter or a sister who has been diagnosed with breast cancer that puts you in a higher risk category, especially if they were diagnosed at a young age. Say if you had a mother who, were di who was diagnosed with breast cancer age of 45, that puts you at a significantly higher risk. Uh, other than that, there are now some genetic markers, uh, the most uh, well-known being a BRCA gene. If you know anything, if you have heard that, that's pr a problem in your family or your, you yourself have a positive BRCA gene, that's something that can put you at a higher risk for breast cancer. Uh, if that's the case, that's a discussion you should be having with your primary care doctor saying that, hey, I'm at a higher risk for breast cancer. And then, then the normal screening criteria does not apply to you uh, anymore. Uh, meaning that if you, if you had a first degree relative who was diagnosed at a very early age, especially a mother who was diagnosed at an early age, or if you have a BRCA gene, and you have to talk to your primary care doctor. And there are these uh, calculators out there uh, that help determine as to when you should be started with screening and whether you should be getting a screening breast MRI. We have screening breast MRIs available at Andrew Sagan Valley Hospital currently. Uh, we'll soon be getting them also at Weeks Medical Center. So it's definitely available, but it's, it's not available for everybody. It can be costly to the insurance company. So they kind of ration it and you would have to talk to your primary care doctor if, if you're in that higher risk kind of uh, uh, category. So I think at this point, I just open it up to questions. If you guys have any questions as to what we offer up in North Country, uh, or if there are uh, specific questions about breast cancer screening, I'm happy to answer either of those. I think the best way to do it, if you unmute yourself and uh, you can ask a question or you can type something in chat uh, to Nancy or the whole group and I'm happy to answer it. Are there any questions? I'm not just oh, out of, here's oh, one. I, have, I see something on chat here. All right. Well, I just, out of curiosity, I was just wondering how many people on this thing are uh, members of the community or how many people are referring docs or are referring providers. All right. I don't think I have a way to take a poll, but. Uh, it's just curious. 
All right. Well, in case you need to reach us, I'm going to go back to our first slide here. Uh, so just want to go back to our first slide. That way you guys have kind of a way to reach us uh, in radiology. Uh, you can actually call any of the three hospitals and uh, you can directly either ask to be connected. Oh, am I no, no longer sharing a video? No, we can't see your screen. Oh, you can't see my screen. Let's see if you can go get back to this. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, you guys can call our radiology department. So you can either just call the hospital and ask them to be connected to radiology. Uh, it's a very easy way. You know, you don't have to go to your primary care doctor. If you just need screening, give us a call. If you have a primary care doctor in the area, we'll just ask who it is. And we can get an order from them to get your screening done. Uh, if you are presenting with some sort of symptoms, you know, similarly, you know, we'll ask who your primary care doctor is and we can get orders from them to get you seen at any of the three radiology departments. Um, similarly, uh, if you have any breast issues uh, and, you know, want to see one of these breast surgeons, they're very eager uh, to, you know, you can call any of their offices, meaning you call the, uh, the main number for the hospital asks to be connected to general surgery and see if you can, uh, you know, ask them if you can get an appointment for a breast problem with a surgeon and they can often put you on the schedule directly. They're very uh, informed people. Uh, sometimes, you know, people get a diagnosis for something that is benign, but they want more information uh, you know, say you get a diagnosis with something called a fibroadenoma, which is a benign finding. Your doctor may say, hey, it's a completely benign thing. But do you want to talk to somebody and say, hey, is this something I need to get surgery for? Like, should I be worrying about it? You know, all three of these people on the screen, Dr. Duran, Dr. Jones, Dr. Etking, are happy to talk to you, um, see if you need a referral to a, a specialist, any, any of those things. So... Other than that, thank you for attending on a Wednesday evening. I know you guys are busy. I appreciate it. And hopefully we'll have you come in for your screening. Thanks, thank Nancy. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was wonderful. All right. You take care. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Thank you, everyone.